Sure, because absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Absolute value of negative 10 is, is 10. You guys still with me so far? Okay. What's another case where these absolute values would be equal to, uh, equal to each other? I gave you two. Where they're exactly the same number here or exactly the same number here. Positive 10, positive 10, negative 10, negative 10. What's another case that you could have? 10 equals negative 10. Say that again. 10 equals negative 10. 10 and negative, okay. So if this was 10 and this was negative 10, would these still be equal? Yes. I need you to kind of get this if you're going to understand the idea here. Are these, are these equal or not? Yes. What's the absolute value of 10? 10. What's the absolute value of negative 10? 10. So when I plug them in the absolute values, they both become positive, but they're still equal. There's one more case. If this is negative 10 and this is positive 10, would that still work? Yes. Absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Absolute value of positive 10 is 10. Do you see the four cases? There's actually only two cases. I want you to kind of see this for a second. I know I drew four of them up here, but these really are kind of the same idea. This idea, these first two are, if you have the same exact number inside your absolute value, whether they're both positive or whether they're both negative, if you have the same exact number, your absolute values will be equal to each other. Are you with me on that? Because positive 10 equals positive 10 in absolute value, and negative 10 equals negative 10 in absolute value. They're, both, they're all positive 10. So far so good? So this is case one. You have the same exact number. Case two, case two, case two is the case where the insides are opposite each other. However, when you take the absolute value, it doesn't matter because it's going to make everything positive no matter what. Do you see that case? So even though they're opposite numbers, one's 10, one's negative 10, one's negative 10, one's 10. Even though they're opposite numbers here and opposite numbers here, it doesn't matter. The absolute value will make them positive and therefore you will have an equation in this case. So first case, same exact number. Second case, opposite numbers. So just like before, this is going to lead us to how many equations do you think? Two. Not, yeah, not four. We don't need four of them because these are going to work out the same. This is the same case. Same number, same number. That's, that's, only, that's one equation here. This one is when you have opposite signs. Opposite, opposite. That's another case. So we're still going to get two equations out of this. Here's your equations. The first one leads to this equation. The first one, first case here, says if I just ignore the absolute values and make these insides equal to each other, I am going to get a valid solution. Does this make sense to you? If I, if I just set these insides equal to each other, that's what this said, they are equal. So if I set the insides equal to each other, that gives me one. So one without changing anything, just equal to each other. <clears throat> one without changing any signs, directly equal. The other one says this. <laughs> the other one says, if they're opposite or off by a sign. So this is 10, this is negative 10. Or this is negative 10, this is 10. We need one more equation. We need one where the first one stays the same, but the second one is negative. Okay, so one with changing the sign of the second absolute value or second expression.
Now, I always have some students ask me, well, Mr. Leonard, if we make them both the same, one without changing signs, and we do one by changing the sign of the second expression, why don't we have to also change the sign of just the first expression, and why don't we have to have the negative and the negative? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. If we had, you guys would be, be listening on, on this part, okay? If we had one without changing the sign, and then we change the sign of both of them, I need you to know that this and this are equivalent. If I make these equal, do you see that this and this are the same exact same? They say the same thing. If I divide both sides by negative 1, don't I get that back again? So I don't need both. I just need 1. Also, the same thing here. If these are equal and these are equal, do you see that these are the same thing? Yes, no? If I divide this, both these by negative 1, I get that again. They're the, same, they're the same idea. So we don't need four equations. We just need two. Okay, we just need two. Let's go ahead and let's make these. Here's what I'm talking about. The first case says... If this inside part equals this inside part, that's here and here. Then whatever we get, absolute value would keep it the same. That's what we're saying. The second one says, if we keep the first one the same, and we change the sign of the second one, the second expression of there, absolute value is going to take those and make them both positive no matter what anyway. So the sign doesn't really matter. Do you see the similarity between what we're doing now and what we just finished doing? We, we keep one the same, didn't change at all. We keep the first part the same, and we're going to make the second one negative. Here's how you show that. Please watch carefully on this part. Um, is this accurate to do that, that good enough? Yeah. Explain why that is not good enough right there, this part. Oh, I see. So when I say negative, what I really mean by this, hopefully oh, we should be like rock solid after doing chapter 7 with all that stuff. That's what we really mean, right? We're taking negative of the entire side. You need parentheses there. Do you see what's going to happen with that negative? It's going to go to both. Let's solve these and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, first step, what are you going to do here? What up? No, before that. Good. Get rid of the smaller variable. That's how you solve equations. When you have two variables on the same side or on different sides, so you subtract the smaller variable first. That gives you an idea about where your variable is going to end up. So here we subtract 3x from both sides. You get x minus 5 equals 5. And lastly, what do you do? Yeah. You do the, the constants after you get rid of your smaller variable, that way you know where your variable is going to end up. Oh, that's weird. I said ten. I, I didn't do that ahead of time. I just guessed. <laughs> cool. Actually, it's not going to end up being 10 inside of reps. It might be something else. It would be 35. Um, but, yes, yeah, that's weird. Now, let's go ahead and do the, the next one. Here, the 4x minus 5, that's not changing. But tell me exactly what I'm going to get on the second expression. 3x minus 5. So it changes both of our signs. Now what are we going to do? Carry the 3x. Good. So add that to both. We can do that. We'll get 7x minus 5 equals negative 5. 7x minus 5 equals negative 5. Everybody, what's the next thing I am supposed to do? Add 5 to both sides. If I add 5 to both sides, I get 7x equals to how much? Zero. Zero. Is that okay? Sure. Sure. What are we going to do now? I do the same thing you normally do. If we divide by 7, how much is x equal? Zero. Good. Zero divided by 7 is 0. Zero divided by anything is 0. How many solutions do I get? Two. It's absolute value. You get two vertical lines, you get two solutions. Most, most of the time, this is equal to zero. Let's check them to see if what I was telling you was accurate, okay? Let's plug those in there and see. We'll deal with the 10 first. Now, here's what I can tell you. The 10 should give us exactly the same thing inside of this absolute value. The zero should give us opposites inside the absolute value. Let's see if this works. Do you guys need this anymore? Okay. 
Let's plug that in. If I plug in 10, what's 4 times 10? 4. Minus 5? What's 3 times 10? 30. Plus 5? 35. Is the absolute value of 35 equal to the absolute value of 35? Yes. yes. That works. Let's try the 0. What's 4 times 0? Zero? 0. Minus 5. Yeah. What's 3 times 0? Zero? Yeah. Plus 5. Oh, those are opposites, like we thought. Is the absolute value of negative 5 equal to the absolute value of 5? Yes. That's another solution. That's how we're getting our two solutions. If you had made the first one negative and the second one negative, you would have this case again. You'd get 10 on both sides. Or you'd get 10 for your x. You'd get 35 on both sides. If you made this negative and this one you kept positive, you would again get negative 5. And you'd get 0 for x. That would happen either way. Why don't you try one of these on your own? We'll do one more example for the day. By the way, this goes a lot quicker than what I just made it seem because I was explaining everything so you really understood it. Uh, these do not take a whole long time, which is kind of nice, right? We just make our two equations and solve them. So I'm going to give you about a minute. Go ahead and do this. How many equations did you get? Two. Two equations. If you want to give this one a try when you're done, go ahead and work on that one. Okay, I'm going to start making my two equations up here. So the first equation, we really don't change anything about it. We're just going to write out two x plus four equals three x minus one. Just our, our standard equation without our absolute value. But the other one, the important, the actually the more important one, we do two x plus four, we equal what are we going to have on the other side of that? Negative, Negative parentheses. parentheses. Perfect. Raise your hand if you have the exact that on your paper. Good. You understand the idea? We need those two equations out of that thing. That's great. So here we'll solve these down. I'll solve this one first. We'll have the 2x plus 4 equals negative 3x and then plus 1. Do you see where the plus 1 is coming from? Yes. Are you guys with me still? Yes. Okay. We'll add 3x because that's our smaller variable. We get rid of that first. We get 5x plus 4 equals 1. We subtract 4. We get 